I grab my pen and write raps defending the prophecies I'm not the pastor's friend that ain't mastered in this theology Slave masters can't ain't have to send an apology So know the man of sin can be grafted into this olive tree At school we ain't learn about the Persians and Medes They send us to school to learn about the birds and the bees Cause under heathen watch, evil plots turn to decrees Under heathen watch, even cops turn into thieves Nigga, that's how it is on the wild, wild west Not until the heaven hits the earth will I find my rest all right, so we're on. And um, first and foremost, let me give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh. Um, we give all praise to Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Yeah, this is your top of Sakari. I got my brother Rod X uh, representing the Nation of Islam today. And, um, you know, we just wanted to come on and have a discussion. I wanted to give uh, Rod a chance to kind of explain or not even explain, just let people know, you know, where he's coming from and his beliefs and how they understand it, you know, regarding the scriptures and when it comes to just Islam from his perspective. And, um, you know, it's going to be the first of many, hopefully, you know, see if we can come with a, a good build, all right, and uh, get our point across, all right? <laughs> so me and Rob, we've done this plenty of times. Hold on. Me, me and Rob, we've done this plenty of times. And, um, I want this to be a, a fruitful discussion, all right? You know, I don't want to do too much name calling and hurling insults because, you know, Rod, sometimes if you if you don't like the stuff that's being said, you get you start to come a little undone, all right? <laughs> so <laughs> let's try to keep it respectful, all right? Let's try to keep it uh, respectful, and hopefully it'll, edif it'll edify somebody because I think me and you are both uh, set in our ways at this point, you know, so... There's really no, I can't change you. and You're not going to change me. So it's really for the people that are going to be listening. All right. So yes. I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself. We'll just go the way we normally go and uh, see where it takes us. Yes. Yeah, so I'm uh, Brother Roderick X from the Nation of Islam. Um, I've been in the nation really since 1998. I've been a, a student observer since the year 1998. I was 16 years old when I first discovered the reality of God and the coming of God and the raising of the Holy Messiah. And it was two years later at the age of 18, uh, July 23rd, 2000, when I became an official registered member of the Nation of Islam. And pretty much since 98, before becoming a registered member of the Nation of Islam, I believed. I believed the teachings. Like I have a background where, you know, we kind of grew up going to church, grew up reciting the Ten Commandments of Moses from the Torah. And... I, even though I had this information, you know, had some knowledge or went to church, it's still something that was missing that, in my opinion, didn't fully make sense to me. So, but when I got under the tutelage of the nation and began to get understanding, the nation for me had the ability to answer all of my questions with very reasonable, sensible, practical explanation. And so, it gave me information in a way that I was able to grasp and ultimately spiritually metabolize. And so with that, um, my light that I got from God still burns 20 plus years later. It still burns with zeal 20 plus years later. And in fact, as far as I'm concerned, the understanding, the light has gotten more bright. The understanding has gotten more deep and I'm more clear as a result. So uh, right. that's me, Brother Roderick X, uh, born in Seattle, Washington, and that's that's pretty much the the basics. Right. Yeah, it's cool because um, you know, for me, people don't know how many t how many years me and you go back and how long we've been doing this right here. And I mean, when I first found out I was an Israelite, I was like twenty eight. You know, that's ten years after ninety eight. So you had knew you were a Muslim that whole entire time, or you were practicing that religion that whole entire time. So when I finally when I finally found out I was an Israelite, you're one of the first person that I came to with this, you know. And the funny thing is, you know, as an Israelite, we believe that, you know, the scriptures say that one of the curses we are going to go through is we are going to serve other gods, even wood and stone. And we'll say that the wood represents that wooden cross, which is Christianity, and the stone rep it represents the Kaaba stone, which is um, which is Islam, right? We know. In our belief, we believe that those two religions have a major stronghold on our people. But it's funny because we're dealing with the Christians a lot right now. And as we deal with them, a lot of them don't want to talk to us. You know, all of our parents were Christians. We were all raised Christians. 
and they don't really want to talk to you about it. But it was the opposite when it came to you. <laughs> there has never been a time when I've ever come to you to talk about the Bible or about my belief where you didn't sit down and have a good long two, three hour discussion. <laughs> I called you this morning to talk about this dialogue. I was like, man, man, I could tell that you were still asleep. I was like, man, I'll holler at you later. You're like, nah, 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 it's cool. And we've been on the phones till right now. <laughs> That's how we ended right. up here. Right. See, the dialogue was made to happen. So right. I always appreciate that, you know? And um, yes. like, I said, oh, were you gonna say something? No, no, I was just gonna say yes. Yeah, I bear, I, I bear witness. Yes, I'm, I, I'm hearing you, brother. Right, so because me and you have had these long dialogues, we're not gonna uh, waste too much time with, uh, you know, all the flip arounds and all that. Let's just get right to the steak and the meat and the potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Bible, when we're reading it, and it talks about Christ coming to save us, is that talking about the Jesus of 2000 years ago? Partially now, and I, I wanna be clear, partially because the Jesus of 2000 years ago had an assignment, but as it is written, as it said in the scripture regarding Paul, Paul said he saw the Jesus of 2000 years ago as a man born out of due season. And the context of that is, is that Satan was given 6,000 years to rule. So God gave him 6,000 years to rule. This was articulated through the mouth of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy, where he said, you have six days to labor and to rest on the seventh, the Sabbath day, right? So when the Jesus of 2,000 years ago came, Satan still had 2,000 more years, right? So the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was not Jesus the Christ who would actually end the rule in the kingdom of the present day rulers. So that's, okay, so that's the part that I want to make clear. So to answer your question, the Jesus of 2000 years ago was not Jesus the Christ who is now present today in the 21st century. Okay, so as the story goes, right? It says that Jesus was going to die for the sins of the people, right? Yes, that, that is part of the uh, what's articulated, yes, in the scripture, but we understand it different in the nation, but yes. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get to. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to where the disconnect is at. If we believe mm -hmm. that there was a man named Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago, and you said he did, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out where the story differs and why is it differing there. Right. You see and what I'm saying? Least, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So to put it short and simple, it's what I would call chronological confusion. Chronological or chronolo chronology is a term that represents time. It's the timing and sequence of things. It's what happens, when it happens, how it happens, where it happens, right? So, so you're saying that what we're reading didn't happen then. We 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 have a mixed yeah, up. Yeah, because when you're when you're dealing with the Bible, you're you're dealing with a book that's three dimensional, right? Because these the Bible, the Scripture comes from a God who's a master of time, space, right? So past, present, and future tense. So sometimes when anybody reads the Bible. They don't they can't differentiate and or discern the difference between what has happened, what is happening and what will happen. Right. So that's why it takes aid and assistance from God himself, who's the master of time, space and the writer of his scripture. Right. Or at least the revealer of his scripture. Right. Okay, so that's no, what people get it twisted. That's the mess. That's the mistake that people make is they they try to interpret the scripture without authorization from God. OK, now. I want to stay on the Jesus thing, but I, I want to deal with that too right there. You said without authorization from God. Yes. So who, who is it that you're saying is God that authorized the breakdown that you got? So as it is written in the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, it says, I even I will come. I will search the earth for my sheep that are lost. And then in other parts of the gospel, it talks about when the spirit of truth comes, he will come and he will guide you into all truth. So if we look at that okay. statement, if he's coming, if someone is coming to guide us into all truth, then that means at the time when that statement was being made, the people didn't have the whole truth. They only had a portion of the truth and not all of the truth. But later on, which is now, right, one would come to guide us into all truth. That way we have a more comprehensive understanding of the revelation of the scripture in the context of things the time and what must be done right the knowledge of self god culture history religion you know so that's this, this right now. okay but listen that was good and listen this one i'm trying to do because i know we don't got that much time mm -hmm. let's try to keep this as precise and concise as we possibly can yes, all sir. right because yes, all that that was good so mm -hmm. i'm asking like who is the person who so, who's who's the god that 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 gave you this interpretation so the the god 
God, the Lord of the worlds, as we know in the nation of Islam, is Master Farad Muhammad. He came to America. He was in and out of America since 1910, right? And made right. himself known in 1930 to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, of whom is the Messiah and or the Christ, right? Of which the scripture okay. spoke of. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I read the Bible and it's talking about the Christ and it's being saved, it's talking about Elijah Muhammad. So exactly in certain portions, depending on which which aspects that you're reading, because like I said, it's a three dimensional book. So there's certain things that happen at certain times. Right. And so people misconstrue what time it is. Well, what about Matthew 24? Is that talking about Elijah Muhammad? Partially. So now in the book, in, in the pull book, it up. yeah, pull up the book of Matthew 24. Let me pull it up and I'm going to share my screen real quick. Mm, hop on my Bible gateway. And I can share your screen, too. Mm hmm. Let's see here. Let's see. Do you see that? Yeah, I see it. It's kind of small, but oh, my bad. Let me uh, let me cut this down. Let me cut this down. Yeah, I see it. So that's Matthew twenty-four. So let me just pull up my Bible gateway too. Oh, that's this already on Matthew 28. That's funny. That's where you're at? Yeah, it just opened up to that. You and 24, I'm like four chapters off, but yeah. Uh, yeah, this is that that great commission. Yeah, Matthew 28. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, but go, go for it, brother. Um, okay, so Matthew 24 says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple did this is this jesus of two thousand years ago is this an event that actually happened right here was yeah. there a man named jesus yeah. who had 12 disciples and they came to him so this isn't talking about elijah muhammad right here right this right. isn't there, him there, speaking there, there 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 was a man named jesus he taught or he taught he didn't teach like multitudes but he did teach people back then Right. So he had an assignment 2000 years ago when I say back then, 2000 years ago, and he did he did teach people. But then. So, the then, whole so, this aspect, is, so wait, so this isn't true. Then what we're reading right here. So he had disciples back then, because obviously there's always someone who believes. So wait I'm going to so say we're this. right here in scripture. This doesn't mean this. This this didn't happen. Yeah, that did happen because there was a man named Jesus 2,000 years ago that did teach, but he did not teach the, the degree of multitudes like the Christ would in the 21st whoa, whoa, whoa. century. Okay, so, okay. Let, let's deal with this first real quick, right? Okay. So yes, you're saying this did happen. So he's I'm not saying that it, Jesus... No, I'm not, I'm not saying that it did not happen. I'm saying that that Jesus... Oh, I'm uh, saying you said it did happen. happen. I didn't say did not. Yes. I said you okay. said this did happen. So yes, we're reading it through happen. it, right? Yes, yes. Right, so it says... So let's read what, what you're saying happened. I'm saying this happened too. It says, mm -hmm. and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. It says, and Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things. It says, verily I say unto you, there shall not be one left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. It says, mm -hmm. and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us what shall the... It says, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So why are they asking him to show them a sign of his coming and the end of the world? Why are they assuming that he was going to be coming again at the end of the world? Right. So the reason why they're assuming that he's coming again at the end of the world is like I said in the beginning of, of our dialogue today is that. Right, yeah, but but there's there's some intricate stuff right within what you were saying so the reason why they're assuming he's coming again is because like the apostle paul said that he saw jesus as a man born out of due season out of due time so the jesus who was talking in this scripture two thousand years ago 
was 2,000 years too early, right? Satan still had another 2,000 years to go out of the 6,000 years to rule that he was given. So as this man is speaking 2,000 years ago, Jesus, who had disciples around him, he's basically speaking of a future event of which he's saying that there wouldn't be a single temple or a stone left unturned because he knew back then that the end of the satanic rulership would eventually come to an end. He just wasn't the one that was going to carry it out. It was Jesus, the Christ of the 21st century that would have the power and capacity to carry it out. So that's what that means. Okay, so look, let's keep going. So mm -hmm. they just asked him to show him, to show them what would be a sign of him, of his coming. All right, so they're talking to him. They wanna know, show us when you're coming back. Show us some signs, right? Mm -hmm. So verse four, it says, and Jesus, the one of 2000 years ago, you said this happened, answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. The very first thing that he told them a sign of his coming. The first thing he said, don't let any man deceive you, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing he said, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Mm -hmm. It says, and they were going to deceive many, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that means that that means that we're going to have to, in the earth, before he comes, there was going to be many, many, not just one, not two, not three, many people were going to be coming saying that they were him. Mm -hmm. Right. He's calling himself the Christ right there. You're admitting that this guy 2000 years ago is saying that he's the Christ. He's saying that right here. Well, and then it says I, that the people that are mm -hmm. doing that were going to deceive many people. Mm -hmm. How do you break that down? So the, the man of 2000 years ago, he knew himself that he wasn't the Christ because he was 2000 years too early, like I'm saying. And number two, he ultimately the Jesus of 2000 years ago was murdered and allegedly uh, he's buried in Jerusalem. Right. So the Jesus Christ figure that actually comes to deal with satanic power to remove it from the earth. The enemy doesn't kill him. He kills the enemy. Right. They don't get him. They don't touch him because he's exalted at the right hand of God, like it says in other parts of the scripture, and given power over every king and over every ruler. So now the reason why we're getting this impression quote, and even certain verbal sentiment from the Jesus of 2000 years ago of him coming across as if he himself is the Christ is simply because when you're dealing with God, the master of time space, he is the author of what we call divine continuity, divine succession, right? So the Jesus of 2000 years ago was speaking because he knew the spirit that was powering him and driving him would be the same spirit that returns in the future to actually carry out the things that he didn't have the capability or the power to carry out 2000 years ago. So in one sense, it's as if the Jesus of 2000 years ago is the Christ in the context that the spirit that drove the Jesus of 2000 years ago would be the same spirit in the Christ in the 21st century, except for the one in the 21st century would actually have the power and the authorization from God to wipe the enemy from the face of the earth. So that I know it sounds perhaps how it sounds, but it is what it is. Okay. So back to the scripture we just read. So like I'm saying, I'm trying to figure out how, like I, I hear you quote Bible verses and things like that. I'm just trying to figure out how is it that you can read scriptures like we just read and you can determine that that doesn't mean that because Jesus, two thousand years ago, you just said that that really happened. And you said he does. He knows he's not the Christ, but he just sat there and said that many people were going to come in my name mm -hmm. saying that I'm Christ. He just let you know my name is Christ. Well, I acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge you on that. I mean, yeah, many false people would come. So that's fact. Oh, Jesus, the 2000 years ago was false. So he, he, I'm not saying that he was false. He was just the Jesus. He wasn't Jesus the Christ. Right. So I'm not saying in any, in any, I'm not saying in any form, shape or dimension that the Jesus of 2000 years ago was false or unauthentic. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is there's the degrees, there's levels to this. There's levels to this, like same like it is in life. There's levels and degrees to any and all things, protocols and procedures to all things, 
right? So the Jesus of 2000 years ago, he just wasn't the human being that was designated with the power to wipe the enemy from the face of the earth. And not only that, like I keep saying, it wasn't time to. Satan still had 2000 more years to run this okay. planet. Okay, so the way the story goes, right? Because like mm -hmm. I said, we're, 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 we're dipping into the Bible, mm -hmm. but it's some, for some reason, words don't mean that what they mean anymore. So mm -hmm. the Jesus of 2000 years ago, right? He died, right? Mm -hmm. He was put to death. Now, according to the Bible, he was going to be risen from the dead, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he would be. He would be risen from the dead. So then, it's it's the understanding of what that means. But as a general statement, that is that is true. That's facts. He would be risen from the dead. Where most people different is is what does that mean? We're not we're not confused about what it says. We're in agreement about what it says. We probably are in a quote unquote, perhaps different disagreement as to what it means. So, but continue, brother. Okay, so it says that he was going to die. Mm -hmm. And then it says he was going to be risen from the dead. And mm -hmm. he was going to go back to his father. Mm -hmm. And then he was going to come back and put the nations under his feet when the time was, right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. So now, so 2,000 years ago, Jesus lived. He got put to death. Did he actually really get risen from the dead like the scriptures say? Yes, yes, he did get risen from the dead, like the scripture says. So, okay. however, however, like I said, we're probably different on what that means. So the Jesus of 2000 years ago who died physically was murdered physically or assassinated or martyred. Right. Whichever term we want to use. Is it is it that, was it did it happen the way the scripture said? So it it hap it does, but not how people intend or how people may incline to or understand what it means. So to make it clear to you, to, to be very clear, the body of the man, Jesus, who lived 2000 years ago, right, is buried in Jerusalem. Allegedly, he's in Jerusalem, his body, his physical body, right? So that physical body doesn't rise again. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the scripture. Say that again. <laughs> the body of the Jesus of 2000 years ago who was martyred, right, he, right. his physical body is in Jerusalem, buried in Jerusalem, right? So, so the Bible's lying. It's not lying. It's just what does it mean, right? This is why it takes God. This is why it takes God, uh, uh, Sifo. It takes God to um, give us the interpretation and the understanding of what means what, because He's the exactly. author. Of it. That's why, and that's the whole point that I'm trying to get right. to. Right. It takes God. God. Yes, so that means God. once again that. That means that every word that's written in here, mm -hmm. nobody can understand it unless God yeah, tells them what it means. Exactly. And, and so how the Bible God, words that, yeah, how the Bible words that, it says it clearly. None can get to the Father except that it be through him, right? Him is the right. one of whom God has authorized and has given the interpretation of his words, right, of his scripture. Right. If none, if we're not, if, if nobody acknowledges that human being whom God has designated as the receiver of the true interpretation of his scripture, then no one could right. ever understand his scripture and or get to God and what God can means you, by what he's saying. Can you do me a favor on this? Yes, sir. Because I want I want to be direct and I want to make sure that everybody understands. Yes, sir. No, no subliminals. Can you please just use names? So that people can understand who these are saying, because of course nobody can do anything without God, and right. of course if nobody can come to the Father but through me, the right. me is talking about the Jesus Christ that lived two thousand years ago. I can okay, say so. that when so, it says so, come, to, yes, mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. I'm, I'm and listening. The father, and the Father is talking about Yahweh, and these people were in the book of the Bible. <laughs> the the Bible is giving us the story here, but when you're saying it, you're saying that nobody can come to. Far Muhammad, because he, which is Far Muhammad, who's Allah, unless they go through Elijah Muhammad, who is Christ, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, he is Christ. Yes, sir. And Far and Farrakhan is his messenger, which is basically God, God speaking through him on earth, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You worship Farrakhan. Do I worship Farrakhan? I worship yeah. the God that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan serves, and I honor and the Lord. honorable, and I honor. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for his faithful, unprecedented love and service to the poor, the oppressed, and to humanity in general. So I honor the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and I worship the God that he worships and represents to us. Do you worship Elijah Muhammad? 
I honor the honorable Elijah Muhammad and I worship the God that he represented to us. Do you worship Fard Muhammad? I honor and worship the presence of God in his being. And, and that's, that's just what it comes down to. Okay. Now we had a, we had a long discussion the other day and I want to make sure that this one's documented too, because like I said, I just, I'm just trying to figure out how, cause I know that I know how intelligent you are. I know how your mind works when it comes to everything else. I'm just trying to figure out how you make sense of this. And I know you've had some time to think about it. So I'd like to hear how you lay it down now. Right. Mm -hmm. Do testicles have a womb? Do testicles have a womb? So as I was saying, I'm going I'm to stay right to practical, right? I'm going to keep it just practical. Well, first, before you say it, how about mm -hmm. this? I'm going to let you see it real quick because I let you hear it, but you didn't get to see it. And you know, I don't know if it'll change anything, but let's see. Mm -hmm. It's like for you to tell me how this works because earlier you told me that testicles don't have a womb. And you said that Faircon would never teach that. <laughs> I need some. I need a breakdown. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and break it down. All right, let's move because I don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to frighten you so much that you won't be my friend after tonight. But I came here tonight, whether I left with a friend all became enemies i'm satisfied if i deliver the message because you're gonna have to answer for what i say to you yes, sir. now look at this let's go to isaac isaac if at any time you want me to pause because you want to say something let me know okay yeah go Please. huh no go for it i'm listening to him yep Thank the Lord you. for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebecca conceived. Now, 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 now listen to this. He was, she was having twins. And it says, but the children struggled together within her. Have you ever heard of anything like that in your life? <laughs> You've got twins and they inside struggling with each other. Now, does that make sense? And it must have a deeper significance. So let's get to the theology of it. And look what the Lord said. He said, two nations are in your womb. Gotta fight it. From one father. Yes, sir. Two nations. Yes, sir. Then it said, two peoples shall be separated from your body, and one people will be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. I'm, I'm gonna start right yes, there. sir. What does what does this scripture mean to you? What he's reciting, right? Right. So it's that scripture, strange. yeah, that scripture, like he just said, he said two nations in Rebecca's womb, but yet one father, right? Two nations in her womb, but one father, right? Right. Isaac pleaded with the Lord because his wife, Rebecca, was barren, right? And so as a result, uh, she became pregnant with twins, two manner of people, right? Uh, two nations within her womb, but yet one father. Right. So these are very important components and elements to understanding where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is going with what he's expressing to us, what he's breaking down to us. Right. So. Okay. But so what's the question specifically to me outside of what I just said? The, the question was just when you read that, how do you interpret it? What does that mean to you? So, so that represents that we, uh, the original people, would go through a period of genetic purification, purification, right? For divine purposes that God has allowed because of what God is going to do in the future on this earth, right? He's bringing into existence a new civilization. So some things needed to happen before that happens. So as we're taught, some things need to happen or things need to happen in order for other things to happen, right? So this whole concept or, or, or parable with 
uh, Rebecca and Isaac and the two manner of people or the two nations that were within her womb is just a simple depiction of expressing to us how God was going to use one people to rule over another people. Quote, the elder shall serve the younger, right? The elder shall serve the younger. So therefore, this is a depiction of God using one people to rule another people for divine purposes. The Quran says it different. It says, quote, I'm going to place in the earth a new ruler, right? So now you have the same circumstance of elder and younger, because look at the term new. New means just now, right? Or it's just coming out. So then what happens to the old ruler? So you can't use the term new without there being an indication of the old, right? And you can't use the term old without using older, right? And you can't use new without saying younger, right? So the elder and the younger is a depiction in the Quran as well, but it's articulated differently, but it's the same story and it's the same concept and it's the same divine purpose leading up to an ultimate aim which is the kingdom of God being established on this earth. So that's the okay. ultimate breakdown. And there's more to it. I mean, it, there's way more to it, but that's me trying to be as simple with it as possible. Right. Okay. So, so do you believe that this actually happened? Yeah. We're being ruled by white people as we speak. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they okay. run the earth. <laughs> I want to do this real, real slow and just make it yeah. real simple and easy. And that's yeah. I'm going somewhere with this, right? Yes. So yes. it says, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in your womb. What does that mean? So this is two matter of people. So as we broke down before in a conversation, and I'm going to bring this up again. Be, try to be as precise and concise I will. I, I'll try to, but it's deep. The Lord's words is very deep. His scripture is very deep. So I'm just trying to just bring it as simple as possible. But Ra, Ra is the ancient worship of, of God. Like Ra means God, you know, in ancient cultures and languages, right? So Ra, right? And then when you look at the Quran, Becca is a nickname or an alternate name for Mecca. So Ra, Becca, right? So you're talking about the city of gods, right? So now you have Yaqub, AKA Jacob in English, Yaqub in Arabic. He was born in Saudi Arabia, right? And then you have Master Farad Muhammad. He was also born in Saudi Arabia. So now with that being said, if the city of gods or the home of God, Saudi Arabia, both Jacob and Master Farad Muhammad, then this Saudi Arabia represents the womb from wherein these two manner of people, right? Because even though Jacob was a black man, whoa, his, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah. So you, so these two nations, you're saying this has something to do with uh, Yaqub, the father of, of, of the European, as we now know them. And then Master Farad Muhammad, the father of the new people and the new civilization that's coming to this earth. Okay, but it's, they're both from Saudi Arabia. So when you say two manner of people in the womb of Rebecca, what I'm ultimately saying is that's a metaphorical story representing two gods, right? Who are going to so produce this, two different manner of people, right? So Yaqub produced after 600 years, he produced a people that had a certain manner about them, a certain disposition about them. But when Master Fart Muhammad returns on okay. scene, he's going to produce a people that would have a different manner to them as well. Okay. So that, that's, so, I, and I try to get deep, but like I said, the, okay. the Lord's words are yes, deep. I'm glad we picked that that a little bit because I didn't know that that's where you're going. Because I asked you, did this really happen? You're saying, yeah. But mm -hmm. no, you don't think it really happened. You don't think there was a girl named Rebecca who had sex with a man named Isaac and his semen got into her and mm -hmm. two different babies were born in her stomach that became two different nations. You don't believe that? I, now, I believe, hold on. Now, I, I, I do general, I believe that, you know, Isaac was real. You know, Isaac had a wife, obviously. And they had offspring, obviously, but in right. this specific context, right, regarding this two manner of people in the womb of Rebecca context, mm -hmm. right, that specific part, that part is more metaphorical than it is actual, right? So not to say that they, there wasn't an actual Isaac and there wasn't an actual Rebecca and they didn't actually have children. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this specific portion of the story is more metaphorical than anything. It's representing something much bigger than what is captured in the actual circumstance is what I'm okay. saying. Okay. I heard that, but I'm still not getting a, 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 a direct answer. I don't think mm -hmm. that I, I, so Isaac, did he have two twins? Did he have two twins named Jacob and Esau? To my understanding? Yes, he did. 
this really happen? Uh, to my did he really have a life yes, member? it did. Yeah, to really my understanding, yes, it did. It's just uh what was the significance of it, right? So that's that's yes, it happened, but then the question is what was the significance of it, right? And what does it ultimately mean? Okay. And okay, so I don't want to yes, sir. No, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to take too long on it because I, I realize that when I say concise and precise and concise, it, it'll take that long. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get you a simplified answer on what these things mean because I'm getting ready to press play, and I want you to I want you to tell me what this means mm -hmm. because you did, you didn't give me the same answer we're getting ready to get that he said that Elijah Muhammad gave to him. Now the honorable Elijah Muhammad said the Bible is so tricked up. That it takes God to interpret it. God. Even white folks look at it sometime and, and say, we sure fixed it because we can't even understand it. <laughs> fixed it. <laughs> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, it's talking about the womb the dark womb of the testicles of the black man. Now, see, and and that's what we were talking about that day, mm -hmm. right? Because yes. in that scripture, in that scripture that he has up there, mm -hmm. hold on, in that scripture that he has up there, it says Rebecca's womb. There were there were there were two nations in her womb. Mm -hmm. So when he starts off, he says it's talking about the womb. It's like mm -hmm. okay, that's right. But then it says it's talking about the womb of the testicles of the black man. You told me that womb don't have testicles. So we can go back and play the rest if you feel like there's more that needs to be said. No, I but mean, he, he said he said what he needs to eat. The Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan said what needed to be said. So it's just a matter of how do we understand what he said, right? So for me, being in the nation of Islam and being under the teachings for 20 plus years, I am acquainted with not just one lecture of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, but thousands of lectures, right? It's like, it's such a vast teaching and it's such a deep word that's lower than deep, higher than high, right? That you kind of have to, like the Bible says, line upon line, precept, precept upon precept, right? So there's certain things that has to happen that has to be understood before you can understand other things. Right. It's, it's like basic arithmetic before getting into algebra and calculus. There's just certain things that has to be understood before you can understand other things. So when I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan make the statement that he just made, made on this clipping that you just showed the people, I understand it differently because I have a different degree of, of spiritual or let's just say uh, uh, scientific acumen when it comes to this teaching. I've heard thousands well, of lectures and written you? Uh-huh. Right. But then how come when I asked you if if <laughs> if testicles have a womb, you said no. And well, I said, well, it, figure out what they do. And you well, said, no, he never did that. Because I was trying to understand the spirit in which you were asking me that, because I mean, for face value. Right. If I'm just going to go off just the words and not, and try not to even look at anything unspoken, but just looking at the spoken. I didn't fully know where you were coming from with that. But. When it when it comes from the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, I know where he's coming from and I know what he means. But other people, well, can you please I, best to explain yeah, what, what so you think simple, means with that? Simple. So in the nation of Islam, and as and not just the nation of Islam, but it's right there in the Torah, right? So Moses in the first five books, specifically in the book of Genesis, talks about how darkness was on the face of the deep and how God brought light out of darkness, right? And so in the nation of Islam, we're taught about the self-creation of the original man or of the originator who, of, who is God, right? He pulled himself out of triple darkness, right? But within the genome of that man who was and is God, right, there was both male and female in him, meaning X and Y chromosome. So it is now presently understood by the scientific world, by, by the physiologist slash biologist and all scientists of genetics, it is understood that both male and female exist within a man, right? If it was just woman on the earth and no man, you couldn't pull a man out. But if there's a man on the earth, then you can pull a woman out of a man, right? So 
man has XY chromosome while a woman has only XX chromosome. This is no sexism. This is no fascism talk. This is the straight scientific fact, right? So there is a womb within a man, same as there being testicles on a man. You feel what I'm saying? So when the minister was saying it in the context that he was saying it, the womb of, 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 of the original man or, or whatnot, this is basically just representing, like I told you earlier in the conversation, Acts chapter 17, right? Where it says from one blood came all people, right? So from a genetic ether cosmic suit, you were able to pull woman. You were able to pull white man, brown man, yellow man, red man from one cosmic genetic source, right? So this is what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is talking. So when we talk about this two manner of people, okay, you have two manner of people on the surface, but what is the ultimate root? What is the ultimate source? What is the ultimate essence of these two manner of people? It is the womb of the original man, right? And it sounds like a really funny statement on the surface, but when people dig deep, then they can understand that within the original man is X, Y chromosome. And not even just the original man, but in male period, it's just carried through the male species. But all men come from the original black man, specifically from the originator of the heavens and the earth, who brought himself up out of triple darkness. And it is understood by the scientists of this world that there are more cosmic we are more chemically connected to the cosmic elements in outer space than we are to the terrain under our feet. And that is simply because the originator made himself up out of that triple darkness, using all of the cosmic elements and whatever he needed to use to compose himself. So that that is that is the, that is one of the explanations that I have to describe all of that. OK, so remember, we were looking at this scripture right here, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked you before we let Farrakhan speak, I asked you, what did it mean? All right. Mm -hmm. You told me what it meant. All right. After that, Farrakhan said that Elijah Muhammad said that this is talking about the womb. So I'm the womb of the testicles of the black man. But right here, it says that two nations are in thy womb, but he's talking to a woman. He's telling her two nations are in her stomach. This has nothing to do with testicles anywhere. And when you read it yourself, you didn't say a thing about testicles. But Farrakhan didn't even come up with that on his own. He said somebody else told him that this is talking about the testicles of a black man. Right. When you read this, when you're reading that, you don't come up with that. The only way you come up with that is if you're letting somebody tell you that and you just believe whatever he says. And I believe that you're smarter than that. OK, so precise. I, I asked you what did this mean? You're, you're right in the context that, yeah, you have to be taught the interpretation of scripture from God, because like the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said in the same clip, he said, quote, the Bible has been so tripped up that it would take God to interpret it for us. So you're absolutely right. I had to be told because Roderick X is nothing of himself, right? I am only a student of the honorable Elijah Muhammad who spoke with God who gave the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the proper interpretation. And this is understood throughout both Bible and Quran. For example, in the Bible, in the Bible, Luke chapter 24, right? Luke chapter 24. It was Jesus that was skilled in the maneuvering of the scripture and taught the people the meaning of the scripture. This is according to the book of Luke chapter 24. And then when we scroll over to the Quran chapter three, the family of Amron, verse 48, it says that God will teach him the Holy Messiah and or Jesus Christ, the interpretation of the gospel, the interpretation of the Torah and the interpretation and meaning of the book, which is the Holy Quran. So the world is without light. The world is without understanding. The world is without the correct way of interpreting right. the scriptures of God without this figure named Messiah and God himself. Right. So that, right. Right. You just have to be clear on that. That's the that's the view of the nation. Right. Hey, Rod, if a, if a white person came to me and told me that I was I was white and I believed him, is it safe for me? Is it safe to say that he deceived me? If a, if a white person came to you and said he's white and you believed him? No, if a white person came to me and told me that I'm white 
told me, "Hey, Ben, you're Caucasian," and I believed him. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't I be? De- wouldn't I be? Wouldn't it be safe to say that I've been deceived? Well, first of all, if somebody said that to me, the first thing I would say to uh, first thing I would say to them is, "What do you mean?" <laughs> what do you mean? I know, I know what you would like, say. I'm not. I'm not going to just be <laughs> deceived or misled per se, I'm like because because right, interpretation. Right. Go for it. Yeah. No, no. Listen, I know what you would say. Like, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? But what if he said that to somebody and they believed him? Wouldn't it be safe for us to say this nigga's deceived? <laughs> Even though he might believe that he's white, he's deceived, though, right? Yeah, so I mean, if someone if someone makes any type of statement, I, I would say an intelligent right. person, right. a mentally balanced person would always question what someone means, right? Because okay. to okay, interpret, right. and that's the mechanics of interpretation, if I may say this real quick, to interpret yeah. means to understand what the person means by what they're saying, not what you mean by what they're saying or want to mean or how you understand what they're saying, but what right. they mean by what they're saying. That's what it means to interpret. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's the problem with the world is that everybody's looking at the scriptures of God and they're making up their own meaning and their own understanding. And they're disconnected from what God meant by what he said and what God means, you know, by what he's saying. So that's a problem in the world. Everybody has their own understanding of God's scripture. Right. If people want to have their own understanding, they should right. just go write their own book. All right. All right. Listen, listen. Yeah. All of this is happening. Because mm-hmm. these are two thousand years ago, said specifically. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I see. Now I gotta get my magnifier, but yeah, I see your screen. I made it big, but it says, yeah. "And Jesus, the two thousand years ago, said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you." Mm-hmm. It says, "For many people are going to come in my name, saying I'm Christ, and shall deceive many." So if we have a person on the earth saying they're Christ, and they're mm-hmm. teaching us things like there's a, the, the 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 womb of a testicles. And when I ask you about that, just me, you're not doing, oh, I'm trying to figure out what you mean by, no, you're not doing that. You're hearing my words and you're like, no, there's no. But then there's some guy who's saying he's Christ, who's here to tell you something that is as deceptive as that, that you know better than, but you'll be, you you believe it because you're saying that he's God. But Jesus said, don't let nobody deceive you. Okay. You so now here's, yeah. Second? Yeah. Do you, yeah. do you stop and think for one second, maybe Jesus 2,000 years ago was telling the truth, and just maybe these people over here saying that their Christ could be wrong. Right. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, we're black people that have been subjugated to the European conquest. So our whole lives, grandmama, aunties, all type of people had white Jesus on the wall, and they told us that that right. was Christ. Right. right. So, but remember, we, but remember we, though, so, right? so, so, but so remember. with that being said, I'm just saying with that being said, when that Jesus of 2000 years ago said that there will be false ones coming, that was facts. That's facts. Okay. But okay, at the listen, same time, at the same time, he also said that the actual one was coming too, right? So right, that's listen. the part that's kind of being omitted. That's the most important no, part being omitted. Listen, right? listen, because because right, it's one thing right, to, right, to right, not be deceived, right, but it's another right, thing. Right, 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 right. Slow it, down. It, all right, I'm, I'm going to let you do all the talking, but slow down for a second, all right? Yeah. You're saying that the Jesus 2000 years ago said there would be one that is coming, right? But yeah, he's saying that, that he truth. Yeah, but he's yeah. saying he's the one that was coming, all right? For one, he said people are going to come in my name saying that I am Christ. I'm not making that up. I'm not telling you that hey, somebody told me that. I'm looking at the text that we have sitting in front of us, all right? And the second part is when I first said this to you, when I first read this to you, cuz I knew you were going to go to oh, our our families had white Jesus in the house. I knew you were going to do that. It says right here, for many, not just white Jesus in the house. It says, for many people are going to come saying that they are me. Many people. So not just that white Jesus, there's other people saying that they're Christ. And it says they're going to deceive many. If if when I ask you about does the testicles have a womb and you say no, and then I say, well, Farrakhan said it, and you say, no, he wouldn't say that. Then I show you him saying that. And now you're saying, yes, 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 that's true. That is a problem. And that is against what you know is rational and what's logical okay so and you oh, know it. i i hear you loud and clear on that so here's the difference here's the difference when the honorable minister lewis faircon makes statements the honorable minister lewis faircon is guided divinely right and by somebody from my whole said, experience right. and i'm gonna just tell you this from my whole experience right and all, all i can tell you is my experience you take it or leave it alone 
but my whole 20 plus years in the nation are under the nation of Islam's teachings. The honorable right. minister Louis Farrakhan has never lied to us about nothing, period. Okay, he has right, not listen. lied to us about nothing, right? right listen, everything that he's ever said has made sense and checked out on a multiple of levels and dimensions. So right. when the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan says something, that's law to me, right? It don't have to be to other people, but that's law to me. That's God to me, right? Now, with somebody who's not the honorable you, minister Louis Farrakhan, you and specifically God. and specifically, not only not the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, but who's not wit and doesn't subscribe and or endorse the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and what he, what he represents, then, in my opinion, they're questionable. They're suspect, right? Anybody who's outside of that fold is just suspect, and that's just the reality, right? For me, right? So. That's what you hear in me. Like you said, well, minister said you just you just a blind right. follower. But when you said, oh, I'm questioning you. Right. Well, I mean, the, the blatant truth is, is that you're not the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and you particularly but I'm, but don't I'm, but necessarily I'm, prescribe to his, uh, what he represents. Right. So I, Rod, I, I, you, I, you know. Right. Right. Do you do you see how cultic and retarded that sounds, though? Well, hey, hey, not, hey. no, no, no. Oh, this is uh -huh. how this is how this is how cold it is. Right. I come to you and I ask you, do testicles have a womb? You say, no, hell no. I say, well, Farrakhan said it. That's who you said is God. You said, no, he didn't. He would never say that. I say, okay, then I play it for you. you then, you then you said, that's not Farrakhan. I don't believe that's his voice. So well, I had was, to rewind it back because yeah. you didn't believe that he would even say something well, like that. Well, there was something so, new, Auntie. <laughs> there was something. No, no, there no, no, was, no, 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 was no, no. Yesterday, you said this yesterday. I let you hear that. Today, you have this whole entire breakdown and it defies what you know as logical and correct. You've never well, been taught that. You've well, never when heard I heard the before. honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because when you said it, you're not Minister Farrakhan. I'm sorry, but, brother, but you know I'm what telling I'm saying. You what, I'm telling you but what he said. When the I'm honorable right Minister Louis Farrakhan said it, I knew what he meant. When you uh, said okay. it, I wasn't sure but, what you meant, but when he but, said it, I knew what he meant. But right? then you told us so that was a difference. That was a difference so, because you could have been giving it your own spin. And so with that being said, I didn't believe in the spin, not necessarily that minister said it, but I didn't believe in the spin. So I needed to hear it from the source so that I can understand what he meant by what he was saying, not what you thought he meant and then spend it into what you're saying, that's right? So that's the nuancy difference. That's the nuancy difference no, 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 about what we're saying. Not, but brother, the, brother, the, real quick, brother, brother, real quick, you do realize that we're like uh, 11, 12 minutes past, uh, our conclusion. So we're gonna have to have a part two. Okay. We're gonna have to have a part two. We we can wrap up. Yeah. Let me see. We can we can definitely have a part two. But yeah, uh, we yeah, gotta this, have this a part two. Time flies when you having fun. <laughs> this is a good one, man. You know, I know you weren't prepared. It either was I really. I put a couple of things up there. Next yeah. time, maybe we'll be a little more prepared. I try to let you know. Time get flies, but it's beautiful dialogue. And like you said right. in the beginning, like we are who we are. We pretty much likely right. ain't gonna change from our positions. So therefore, right. this is for the people. This is dialogue for the people. So I hope that the right. people get this dialogue right. and 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 analyze it, research it, and and reach balanced conclusions as a result of what they're hearing here. Right. So yeah, most definitely. Uh, but yeah. like like we said in the beginning, and um you know, so I'm thankful to the coming of God and the person of Master Fart Muhammad, right, who raised up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was the first begotten from the dead black nation in America. Right. And I'm thankful for the raising of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who's a further extension of the work, a guide, a comforter, a reminder and a mercy in our midst. Right. So I just want the people to know and understand that, you know, guidance is here on scene. If we're looking for it, it's here. So, um, but I thank you, brother, for the dial for the platform, for the platform for producing and uh loaning, you know, giving me an opportunity to be on the platform to to just represent my my uh my belief, my viewpoint, and what's been revealed to me. Right, right, absolutely, man. And hopefully we can do some more. Like I said, part two, part three, part four, you know, and um, you know, hopefully somebody's edified by it. And it's called because I don't think you understand the position that you're in. And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm pinning you against these scriptures because I want you to see that it might be your job to go and show this to Farrakhan because he's been doing this job that he's been doing for a very long time, far before most of us knew that we were Israelites. This is all new news to him. 
and mm -hmm. you are a smart person. So I know when I ask you a scripture before it and you give me that breakdown, I know you know that's what it means. So the extra being put on it, you have to ask yourself, why is that happening? You know what I'm saying? And hopefully more of this will lead to more thought like that. And, you know, you're my bro. I love you. You know what I'm saying? I love the brothers in Islam. Those are my brothers, too. You know what I'm saying? But we're all under the curse that God said we will be worshiping other gods. None of us got out of this. Every single one of us from the time we came over here at a point where we were worshiping another God. We believe our people need to snap out of that. And, and remember who we are as a nation. When, when stuff happens bad to us, it happens as a nation, not as a religion. All right. And hopefully, you know, like I said, we can do more of these, man. But yeah, I love you, bro. And uh, I love you too, brother. Um, yes, yes, sir. We definitely have to right. do more of this. We definitely have to do more. I'm ready for part two as soon as you're ready. Right. Absolutely. So let me know when you got some time. We'll, we'll, we'll get another one up here. Yes, sir. All right. Till the next one. Yes, sir. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum.